come directly into the YouTube channel and there's lots and lots of um, videos that we could uh, in fact set our um, classes to do, to view. All varying uh, in length and, length and stuff. Um, some of these webinars that I've just mentioned that are on the on-demand section are actually further down here, here are the teach webinars here, but which as we uh, perhaps are aware of or may not be aware of, they're all, they all last around about an hour or so. But there's also lots of other smaller, if you like, skill-based um, videos that we might in fact find useful that we might want to set as activities um, for our students. And so uh, there, as, as you can see, there's lots and lots of um, examples. Um, just be aware that we've got the little arrow to the, um, pointing to the right here. If we click on this, we have access to more of these uh, videos. And if you look really carefully, you've got here basically some of, the con some of the different courses that some of these videos are related to. But like most things, a lot of these, um, a lot of these skills are transferable from course to course. Um, and so. I would suggest that uh, these could be very uh, good resources if you want to get your students set up um, to kickstart into next year in terms of um, making them familiar with what the calculator can possibly do. Um, now, the other section that I wanted to uh, show us, I'll show you all is where the activities exchange is, and this is where um, some of the, these are the re some of the activities that um, I've downloaded to show you tonight and so has Roger. Um, I'm actually back on the home page as you can see and if we go now down to do downloads, what we've got here are the classroom activities exchange. So if I click on this and wait a second or so, what we have now coming up is a whole, a myriad of um, uh, different activities that are based around all the different courses around the country. Down the left hand side here we can um, do searches to narrow down um, we, uh, activities that are written for different courses. But not only that, we can also narrow down the searches with regards to what sort of technology that some of the activities have been um, uh, used for. So for instance, I might be interested in um, VCE here in um, Victoria, so I'm going to click on that. I might want to choose further maths. And as you can see over here now, it's starting to narrow down the search here a little bit for us. I might be interested in using the TI Inspire CAS technology, so I'll click on that again, and we're starting to narrow down our search. So over here you can see um, some of the information with regards to the activities. The Give Me Five one here, that is one, of the, one that I'm going to be um, demonstrating tonight. But if you actually then want to download some of these, it's a matter of just clicking on the a title and you've got an overview of what the activity is about here. Um, and then over on the right hand side here, you've got all the links to download the resources. Typically, you have a worksheet, worksheet, a student worksheet to work through. You'll have an answer sheet, the all important answer sheet, and quite often um, the uh, calculator files come with as well. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel or anything. And for the most part, the calculator files, uh, you can edit them and change them to suit yourselves. Um, <clears throat> Now what I think I'll do is I'll minimise this now and I'm going to show you a couple of the activities that um, I've uh, downloaded to possibly for people to consider in terms of um, getting students started for next year and uh, at the same time uh, giving us a little bit of a breather so we can get some of the uh, end of some of these end of year tasks, report writing and so forth uh, done at the same time. But at least give the students some meaningful act, uh, activities to do. The first one I'm going to do is the crossword. I'll have a look at the crossword. So I've downloaded this from the activity exchange. What I've got here I'm showing you at the moment, and so I'll expand that, 
is the is the um, student um, file, if you like. And as you can see, it's at, it's sort uh, it's focused between so sort of, you know for year ten, year eleven levels, as you can see highlighted here. And uh, what's really nice about all these activities are you are given clear instructions on, on how to in fact um, navigate or navigate their way through the particular um, problem. And so if we then move on to the next page, what I've got here is the crossword. So here's the crossword that has to be filled in and here are the clues associated with the crossword. Now this is the, the clues perhaps need a little bit of explaining, so I'm going to have a look at this across clue for a start where it says graphs, geometry, and then measurement. We sort of need to have an understanding of what that actually means. All these bolded clues for a start gives us a, um, a pointer to which calculator application that we in fact this clue is related to. So graphs means that we actually have to go to the graphs application of the calculator. So if that's the case, what I will do is minimise that and then come over to my calculator. And so I've opened up a calculator file here, as you can see. At the moment, I've actually got a calculator application open. But what I need to do is insert a graphs one for that first clue. So if I press Control I, which is one of the ways we can access the um, different applications on our calculator. If I go to graphs, so as we can see that was the clue that was mentioned in bold. Now the next clue after that it was geometry. So we go down to geometry, there's geometry, and the next clue after that, so if I click on that, oops, I think I made a mistake there, I'll better start that one again. Um, I'll undo what I just did there. Nothing like the old undo button. So we go back to graphs and then menu. I forgot to press menu and then go down to geometry. And then the other clue was measurement. So with this, with this clue now, we've got a few options. We've got length, area, slope, angle and directed angle. Closer inspection of the crossword, so if I go sneak back over to the crossword here, there's the answers. The crossword, crossword, oh, I've got the answers, okay. What I was about to say is that we've got the option where we've got five, basically the clue there are basically it's a letter, uh, a word with the five letters in it, and if we come back to over here, we've got um, possibly slope as an as an option, possibly angle, um, and so therefore further investigation would be required before we would um, decide which is the correct answer. So I would actually encourage students to perhaps write both of those down beside the clue. Then what I would do is encourage them to then have a look at the, oops, I've uh, hit the wrong, the wrong one again. The next clue, I'll go back to the clues. We'll have a look at, at. Uh, one down, yeah. One down here, one down. So we'll have a look at one down, see what that says. So we'll go with one down here. So calculator and calculus. So again, calculator there, the, the bold is telling us which calculator application, and then we're going to press menu and straight into ca uh, the calculus um, menu. So let's go and have a look. So I'll click over to here, I'll hit escape. Now if you remember, uh, my first page was actually a calculator page, so there's my calculator application. If I press menu and then go to calculus. So here's all the options, and now if we could remember that, that that clue was only three letters down, I'm liking the look of sum as a possible option. 
which means if, if that's the case, that would also then narrow down the one, the one across the slope. And so then we can start filling in the um, crossword. So a nice little activity, I think, because it basically it's encouraging students to explore the menus that the calculator um, has got through the different applications. Um, and uh, it's a simple activity, but gives them a, a real appreciation as to where different um, where the different different functionalities of the calculator lies. So I think it's a quite a nice little um, activity. Yeah, now, it's a double uh, bunger. I've got more to show. Brian, were you going to say something then, were you? I was just going to say it's a double bunger in the way that it, it um, has, has them do a bit of an exploration of the calculator menus, while also um, exposure to some some of that maths vocabulary. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, I just I, mm. I just typed into the the chat there that um, vocab such as the word calculus. Um, I've, I've generally used this activity at year nine, so of course the students won't have uh, encountered that word yet in their in their maths course. I think early exposure to such a vocab isn't isn't a bad thing. I reckon that's good. Using something to look forward to further down the track. Yeah, and, and, and generally when I, I do this as an early activity when students are first uh, moving towards this technology, depending on the school you're at, depending on what year you, you introduce um, the, the Inspire. But the kids are excited. But they want to see what it's all about. And, and if they can see, oh, yeah, there's all these pages, there's all this, tech, you know, all this terminology, and, gee, there's some exciting things yet to come in my maths course. You know, if, you can, if we can light that fire, I think it's a good one. Absolutely. Um, the second activity that I was going to show tonight was the five-figure summary activity that Brian, in fact, uh, was the person behind writing this activity. Um, and I actually think this is a really good one for students uh, possibly in year 11 who have not been exposed to the calculator so much, but at least I would, for most most part, they would have at least have been uh, previously exposed to the statistics involved with the five-figure summary. So I, reckon, I, re I, really like the, I really do like this one as an introductory activity, again, for next year for students to um, have a little play around with. Now, as you can see, um, I've got open here the, um, the student, if you like, the student file. So this is what the students will be getting. And you've got the instructions there, the aim instructions what to do and a series of questions. Again, nicely set out and uh, clear instructions in how to follow. But then the all important teacher answers are over here. I've got open to the left hand side here. So if I, oops, if I can get rid of that and move that across. These are the teacher answers. So as you can see, it's the same, it's almost the same document except for, in red, we've got those answers. And so if I, um, I'm going to minimise that now and move that across. Um, the file that uh, Brian created, this again comes with the package if you like, that when you go to the Activities Exchange and download, you get this file, the Give Me Five file here. And um, there's a series of pages there that we can follow through. As you can see, there is an instructions page at the start, uh, basically detailing what, what's happening on each of the different pages. And you'll actually notice that quite a few of the activities that you download from the website will often have an instructions page similar to this. And here, here we've got the famous uh, list and spreadsheets page where the information is um, put in. Now, I'll just refer back to the um, document. If I open up the document, you'll actually see here, it says the Fantastic Five, a five-finger summary is a convenient way of describing the set of data. Consider the set of data. There it is there, one, the numbers one to nine. And so if I go over to here, the, that information has already been set, uh, it's been already typed in there, ready to go. These are the key statistics here. So it would be familiar to the fact that we can generate the key statistics in um, the list and spreadsheets page like that. But because this, we're talking about the five-figure summary, 
the box plot is obviously an important um, tool that we need to investigate. And again, we've got the, the data here displayed bottom half of the page where it's been split, and we've got the um, box plot here. Now, by mousing over the key statistics, you can see they are displayed. So the first thing would be to perhaps you know, for students to uh, understand is the fact there is, that is the same information as some of the key statistics, statistics uh, calculated there. Bit of a mouthful this time, but not that. Moving right along, a, uh, that information has also been displayed here, as you can see, on a um, notes page application. And uh, what people sometimes uh, don't realise that when these statistics, statistics have been calculated, these variables, if you hit the var button, oops, if I, whoop, hang on, I'll go back there here for a second. If we hit the var button. Maybe on the calculator button. page here. Possibly the, yeah, I'll try that even. There we are, righto. Uh, yep. When you hit the var button, you can see all these variables that are created here, and so that's what Brian's used on these in these um, maths boxes. To he's re um, called up the maximum value and the minimum value. If you follow again, if I press that, there it is, the maximum and the minimum value. Worked out the difference to work out the range, and there are other the other ones that he's just listed. You'll notice that he's actually got the five-figure summary actually just being displayed as a list as well. Um, and then lastly, the activity uh, explores the fence calculations, the upper and lower fence calculations. Again, you can see that the key statistics have been called upon there to um, do the calculations. And then lastly, You've got the lower, the lower and upper fence values displayed here um, to have a little bit of a comparison as to what's going on. Um, now, don't forget that these are changeable files. So once that information has been worked through, you would encourage students to, in fact, start changing these numbers, which I do believe that is actually part of the activity. And yep, uh, that's the go. So that probably just about brings my part of the evening to an end. Um, again, I just want to reiterate the purpose of me to choosing those two uh, activities uh, tonight, and that was, uh, again, to remember that they're just simple activities that are a nice way to introduce the calculator to students, and so if they that students are getting their calculators at this time of the year, um, it, it's a time well spent to uh, choose uh, activities appropriate that they've got the background in maths, so we're not actually reteaching the students anything, but at least they can start exploring how the calculator can um, uh, do, do the job for them. So I think I'll hand over to you, Brian. Terrific, thanks mate, and great to see my little Give Me Five activity having a run. Um, I was quite chuffed when I put that together, and I've also got the fence values in there as well, so I thought uh, it's, uh, it's just a step-by-step -step activity to either introduce students to that, the, the five-figure summary, and the beauty being, once you've got that file, you can take any data set and just drop it into that first, uh, into that, uh, first column list, and everything adjusts. The, the summaries, the, um, uh, the the notes page, and the um, and, and the the box and whisker plot. So she's all uh, she's all tied in. How are you going there, Roger? We're uh, across to, going, to you there. Going well, Brian. Going well. Um, yep. Are we ready to see my screen? Let's do it. Yeah, we we, we okay. are. Uh, we're all all. Sitting back in anticipation. Here we go. Just, uh, just while go. Roger's setting his screen up there, reminder that as um, Craig pointed out there, the all of the webinars, there's two sections on the website. One is upcoming webinars and, and the other is on-demand webinars. So what I'll do is I might just put the link up for everyone. If you, if you follow this link, you go to all 
the, the entire archive, archive of, um, of webinars. So that's a handy one. This one will be one of them. So um, if you want to review this or go through it with your students even, it, it will be available um, by the end of the week. Okay, thanks, Roger. We can see your screen. Okay, fine. Thanks. Well, good evening, everyone, and, and thanks for that, Craig. Uh, that was uh, very, very useful, and you've, uh, you've made uh, my job of uh, continuing on with some of those activities just that little bit easier, so thanks very much for that. Um, well, everyone, what I've prepared for you tonight uh, is, first of all, this PowerPoint, uh, which gives an overview of the two activities that I've chosen for this evening. Uh, and then I'm going to do each of the activities, show the files that, that you get when you download them from the, um, from the TI uh, Australasia site. Um, and we're going to, in some cases we're going to, or in one case we're going to actually create the Inspire file together. Um, and in the other case, we'll just take a look at the one that has been provided by the author of the, um, of the, of the activity. And just a reminder that everything that we're using here tonight uh, will be available to you. I believe Brian will be sending them to you or they'll be available on the website. And that includes this PowerPoint, so there's no need to madly take screenshots of um, of links or anything like that because it's all there and you're going to be able to get it firsthand. So let's just take a look at um, what I've got uh, chosen for you tonight. The, the first one is uh, an activity that um, uh, has actually been written for what we might call in Victoria, call in Victoria um, uh, junior to middle secondary. Um, but I well know year 10 and year 11 students who, if you ask them to, if you give them a reasonably good sized number that's factor rich and ask them to find all the factors, they, one of the first questions they're asking is, yeah, I wonder if I got them all. And um, so this particular activity does a really good job of being able to find the number of factors. It doesn't find the factors itself, uh, themselves. Um, uh, there are other uh, programs which will do that. But in the course of doing this, there is um, there's some coding uh, involved, and that's, I think, the interesting part. And it's a really good one to uh, introduce coding to your younger students who possibly haven't had a chance to see it yet, and they could get quite excited about that. Um, but uh, as it says on the screen there, we, we will be creating an Inspire file, um, and that will be available to you uh, for later. So um, let's just take a look at what's involved. I've got, instead of being linked up directly to the Internet, I've got just the screenshots of those important bits. You'll recognize this from what you saw with Craig. Um, so for this particular activity, you can either download the uh, uh, follow the link that I've got on the screen there, or look for that part of the left side of the uh, activity screen, which indicates National Curriculum 7 to 10. Once you find that, you need to scroll down until you find this particular activity, which is listed as Counting Factors. Um, now, it's listed the author as being Texas Instruments, but the, when you see the worksheets, you'll see the actual author is um, our own Peter Fox. Um, and uh, a little introduction there to explain what the activity is all about. Once you get into that, which involves just clicking on the red counting factors that's, that's there uh, on the screen, you get this general information, which is really good information to, uh, to point out. And you know, when you're looking for various activities, whether it's this or one of the ones that Craig introduced or something of your own uh, that you want to, to look for. There are a couple of key things uh, on this page, I think, that are worth pointing out. One of them is the fact that the vocabulary that will help the students. Now, you might have chosen the activity because it's something you want the students to work on, say, in table groups of four, and you want to be just 
really a facilitator there and just answering a couple of quick questions that um, you know, the, the vocabulary gives you an idea of what you might want to prepare your students for ahead of time. Um, they will encounter it in the worksheet and they can pretty, pretty well nut it out because the explanations on the worksheet are very, very clear. But things like um, what's a prime, what's a composite, what's a, what's a perfect square, that type of thing and some of the basic uh, coding language used as well. In addition to that, um, pay attention to what you're provided with. Um, the lesson files uh, for this include two PDFs, the student activity and the teacher, teacher answer sheet. As Craig was pointing out, the teacher answer sheet is just the student activity with the uh, um, all important answers there uh, in red for you, and I'll show you both of those for this one. And it indicates the, that it's uh, applicable for uh, middle, good for year seven to nine, but like I said, I know some tens and elevens who would very, very much benefit from, uh, from looking at this. Okay, well, um, in the, uh, this just gives us sort of an overview here of what's, what's going to be happening. The first thing we're going to be doing, and it's all done on the one uh, calculator page, we're going to explore this um, inspired notation for modulus um, and use the words input and output. Um, so mod open brackets uh, AB with a comma in between, close the brackets, is the coding that we use if we want to find the um, uh, remainder if the first number is divided by the second, that's that's basically that's basically what it is. And they, they might not have used the word uh, modular arithmetic uh, before, but they certainly have done division, and they're familiar with sometimes numbers divide in evenly, no remainder, and sometimes they don't. So that's what's going to be be looked at. In on that same page, after after we uh, build up a couple of those mod uh, uh, commands. We're then going to start in on the programming. And I've just done a little screen dump there, <coughs> excuse me, of the pathway um, that's on the, uh, it's in the menu of the calculator page, um, which enables us to, um, to go down here and to actually find um, those various commands and then, and then off we go. So, um, uh, I'll say this part of the, the second activity deals with standard deviation, but I think we need to get into the activity, so I'll get out of the PowerPoint for now and just show you the couple of uh, files, the counting factors PDF. This is the student version, um, what, they, what they wind up getting. And uh, you can see that there's a little introduction to uh, finding the, the, the quantity or the number of factors for the number 18 and, uh, you know, it takes them through the fact that um, and you have to read across on this. I was a little bit fooled on this uh, originally, but uh, 18 divided by 1, 18 divided by 2, 18 divided by 3, etc. And then deciding whether you have a factor or not. And you can see that students are prompted um, to start in on finding, um, on using the mod command. To, uh, and there's the little uh, pathway to, to finding that. Now, once, once uh, I start doing that, I'm going to have the Inspire file up and you won't see this. But again, remember this uh, PDF and all the other ones are available um, after the webinar and they're also available on the website. So um, just to take you through it, this is a four page student file. Um, they find some answers for the mods. They get asked a few questions. Um, that asks them to generalize, um, and if they haven't seen it, then of course it's totally up to you as to how much lead time you give them, and you might you might want to have a initiate a class discussion, or you might want to have um, table groups present their answers to questions one through four after a little while of just working on it independently. Um, the next page of the student worksheet deals with. Um, how they're going to get into um, actually creating this program. Um, there are some, I think that it's extremely well explained. Um, I myself don't have a, a really strong programming background, so I found those 
step-by-step instructions very useful myself. Um, you'll notice on these worksheets that they, every once in a while you'd have an icon here of something to be really careful with or, or to note because in the program you have to insert quotation marks and you get this. And I just want to point out uh, for those of you who uh, launch into this ahead of time possibly, maybe you've downloaded it as well and you're working independently, but that's not control X, it is control multiplication sign. It's really important to, to note that and to note where on the handheld the comma is located. Some students may not have used that. That's found in the bottom left corner of the keyboard. That keeps you keeps you clean on the um, uh, on uh, the creation of the program. So lots of very clear instructions there, um, and we'll be doing that in detail. Um, what gets eventually created is a, uh, a split screen where the program is over here on the right and then you get directions about how to go back to the left and actually watch the program in action. And then finally, some more questions that involve um, the, the application of the program and the uh, file that has just been created. Uh, including, uh, I really like this one, question eight. I haven't done it yet, but I, I can smell a rat here that this is going to be one, uh, you know, where they're going to, there are going to be some students that say, oh, yeah, that's okay for numbers, you know, two or three digit numbers, that's fine. But what about, what about really big numbers? And, uh, and here we go. Um, so it will crunch through. It will take a little bit of time to, to do it because they, they have to experience the fact that the program is madly going through this big, long, the short loop, but going through it many times if you're entering numbers that are up in the 10, 20, or 30,000 category. Um, but uh, uh, Peter's recommended here that they use a stopwatch. So there's, there's something there for everybody, especially that competitive nature that lots of our students at this uh, age um, are, uh, are dealing with. So I'm going to get out of that worksheet, though I must uh, say that I've got the printout version on the desk next to me, and I'm going to go to my Inspire file where I've already started a file, uh, I haven't started very much, I've just saved it as something that's called Counting Factors, and this is an, uh, a calculator page. So we're going to spend a few minutes getting into it, and you can just see for yourself um, how familiar you are with it or how familiar or not your students might be with it as well. So we started a new document where we've inserted a calculator application. I'm going to go to the uh, menu and we oh uh, now it's now it's in the calculator application and we're going to go to the calculator menu and go down here to number number which they may not have accessed very much and we're going to then go down to number tools down here and I don't know about you but I like what I'm teaching with Inspire to pause a little bit extra just on the pathway, just leave it up there, especially for those kids who have been nudging each other. They look back up at the screen. They can see where the pathway is. Nothing worse than, I think that's a good having, audience. Yeah. Nothing worse than having several kids. Maybe they've just been out to the loo or maybe they've been distracting each other or whatever, putting their hand up and saying, I don't get it. Where, where is it? Well, it gives them a little bit of time to pause. Then you can check. Of course, yeah. if you're, and, and also, you know, if you're wondering about attention, you can also be, if you're using the wonderful navigator system, you can throw their screens up on up on the screen up in front, and you can see who's with it and who isn't. But anyway, uh, so we're going to mod, and we're going to enter that. And please notice that uh, once you do this for a few times, you could actually type in MOD, and as soon as uh, M and O would be in italics, but when you get to D, um, then it straightens up, so that's a recognized command. But that's one way to find it. So we're now going to put in 18.6. Now I've got the luxury of using the, the computer keyboard, so it's really quite easy. But remembering that the comma is down here, in the lower left of the screen, some students wouldn't be aware of that. In the syntax does require that the number that's going to be divided is first separated with a comma. What's it going to be divided by? In other words, the divise, uh, dividend and the divisor separated by a comma. And when we press Enter, we should get what the remainder is when 18 is divided by 6, which is 0. Now, you've got a couple of choices here, of course. 
if you, uh, since the, uh, the worksheet, which I've got in front of me, I can see that we're going to be doing Mod 18 and 18.5 and 18.12. And so since, since so much of that is the same, I'm just going to go up here a couple of uh, notches on the, uh, on the click pad and um, highlight Mod 18.6 when I press Enter. I now can move the cursor through there and uh, uh, backspace on the 6, type in a 5 and press Enter. And I see that I get a remainder of 3 when 18 is divided by 5. And for doing mod 1812, which is recommended on the worksheet, I do the same thing again. Take it over here and put 12. <laughs> Students will find that handier than retyping mod, especially on the non-QWERTY keyboard they have on the, uh, on the handheld. So once those are done, then the four questions that you saw earlier at the top of the second page of the worksheet uh, exist. And I'm not going to go through them again, but it's, it's getting them to state their understanding, to demonstrate their understanding of what the mod command actually does. Okay, we're going to go right away now to the middle of the second page of the worksheet, which says create a new program by selecting functions and programs. Now, that's not a new application, that's right within the calculator application. So I go to menu and I see functions and programs down here as the ninth entry. I then go to program editor, which is item number one. You notice I'm resisting saying press menu nine one whatever. Uh, terminology, terminology, terminology. It's very important, I think, to always be sticking with that and program editor and then we're going to go for new. So that's the, I think um, that appears on one of the slides as well, but that's the, that's the pathway that we're going to be taking. And you notice as soon as you do that, um, we give a name to the program and it's being advised that we name this program as factor count. So this is one of those uh, Inspire situations where it actually will recognize capital letters. It doesn't in some things like the names of lists on the lists and spreadsheets, but, um, but here capital letters are fine. The name is factor count, and, um, it, but it does have to be one word. So we do have, have that. We're gonna press enter at this stage, or I'm gonna click down on okay. And you know for the students, um, they can just press the tab key a bunch of times and that'll take them down to OK. So we press OK and we've got um, the split screen that I was promising you. Now, uh, Peter's done a really good job here about saying what to, what to insert and where. So you can see the cursor is sitting between um, program and, uh, um, and he says the first uh, task is to request a number from the program user. And to do that, we use the input output menu. So we're go we're, we can see the cursor is still over on the right of the screen. That means we're still within the uh, sub menu of the uh, uh, program editor. So I click on menu and I choose input output, which is item number six. And then I go to request. Now keep in mind, there's um, students can do this really quickly. There's request, request a string and request. We just want request. Uh, and this is very clear on the worksheet. So we hit that. And you can see the word request is there. Uh, alternatively, it could be typed in, but it's better to, better to follow the this. Now, the worksheet shows that the, the command is going to be enter a number. And we want that actually to be printed. So we have to, <coughs> we have to insert those quotation marks. And the best way to do that is to put in control and then the multiplication sign. And you can see then the cursor is now sitting between the quote marks. The command is enter a number. I can do that faster than you can do that on the calculator. I want to use my cursor, uh, move it to the right by one to get on the other side of those um, quotation marks. I then type in a comma 
because that's what the syntax requires, and the name of the number will be N. And all of this, remember, is on the uh, is on the website uh, or is on the uh, uh, the worksheet. So I now press Enter, and uh, under that, if I, and if I don't trust what I've got there, I can just change the side of the screen there, and yes, there it is. Um, okay. Brian sending you out a uh, little poll there. Yeah, I just thought I'd send that one out just to see who's actually used that mod command before. Roger. What do you Okay. Thank you. What do you reckon? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm looking at the time and thinking that I'm running short of time, so I'm gonna turn that off on my screen, and hopefully people can see. That's what the program looks like so far, and, and shoving it over to the left probably is a little bit helpful because you want to be, for, for first-time programmers, you're going to be wanting to explain what this is actually doing as it's doing it. Okay, in this section now, we're going to um, set up a count, and we use the letter C for that, and then we're going to assign a variable to it, and we do that with control, and then this key, which is the various uh, templates key, uh, and you notice it has the colon and then the equal sign. You can individually type the colon and the equal sign, but I think it's probably more important there. We started off at the number zero, make sure that they don't put the letter O, um, uh, number zero, and we press enter. And we've got another space there. And the worksheet says then that we're gonna start a for loop. So we have to select control. So we go back to the menu look at control, and we want the, um, the command that we want this time is this one, which says for uh, dot, 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 end for. That's the one that we, that we want for this particular one. And you notice that you get a couple of, looks like inverted commas, they're actually commas, and they're there for a reason because the syntax requires three different inputs. Uh, we're going to be putting one of them where the cursor is now, then we're going to leap over the first comma and put something in and leap over the second comma and put something else in. So in the first bit, we're going to, uh, because this is going to start at one and finish at N and use I to count these. So the syntax for this is the first thing we put in is the small letter I, and then I use my um, uh, directional arrows, or I leap over the, uh, the comma and put in the number one. I leap over the comma again and put in the number N, which was the, the number that was uh, requesting it. So if they wanted to look at the uh, number of factors for the number 25, um, they will have entered the number 25 um, once the program starts, and it'll count it. Uh, uh, the, the count will start to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and all the way up to 25. And so we're now going to press um, uh, uh, enter. For this, I believe, yep, between the if and the then statement, Oh no, we got the four. Uh, if and then. Yep. So so for i equals one to n. And after that, we have to uh, select an if command. So we go back to, to menu control. Uh, if then end the if. And this is also a tricky one because there's a there. You see that item number three is if then else end if, so be really careful, it's if then end if that's required. Peter says in the worksheet that between the if and the then command, we type in the mod command. Now, I'm going to type in capital M-O-D, open brackets, N comma I. I'm now speeding this up a little bit because I can see that we're getting a little bit close to the end of the time, and I want to get into the second one. So, uh, so if it happens to be equal to zero, if the mod is equal to zero, if it's a factor, 
then it's counted as being true, and um, increasing the counter. That's right, exactly. So now we have to insert the counter uh, after then. So make sure that you leap over the, um, the then, and now uh, change C with its leaping over to turn that into C plus one. So you go to the, uh, um, so it is counted a factor. And you create, uh, he says, create another line between the end for and the end program. So to see where that is, you can see down here, we've got uh, end for and end program. We have to create another line. So I whip the cursor down here. I press enter. And now I'm going to do a display. Where do I find that? I've got to go to the input output menu. So, and I don't know that because I, I don't know programming that well, but the worksheet fully explains it. So we want to do disk display. Once again, we need those quotation marks. That's control multiplied by. And in there, we're going to type QTY, QTY, um, standing, which stands for quantity uh, factors. We leap over the other side of the quote marks, put a comma, which is there, and C. And that's it. Now, we have to save that program. I'm going to press Enter first. I'm going to save that program by pressing Control-B. So there's Control, there's B, and I've got a little reminder up at the top here that factor count is stored successfully. Whoopee. Okay, I press Control-Tab to get me over on the left side of the page. So Control-Tab takes me to the calculator menu, and now you can see the, or the calculator page, or the, the regular calculator page. So it's tabbed in between there, and I'm going to now shove this over a little bit to the right, because now what's going to come into play is more of this. Okay, so the program is ready to run. So we press the var key, and there's a variable, and you can see the type of variable is a program variable, and it's factor count. I just press enter to lock that in, but I resist the temptation to put my first number in there. I'm not going to put I'm not going to put a number in there, uh, and um, Peter has has written that. Um, you press enter again because what you're going to get is is a display for the request. What number do you want to enter? By doing this it'll take us into the program. So uh, what number do we want? So let's uh, test the number 18 to see how many factors it has because that's the one that we had done before. I type in 18, I press OK, and we've got our display. We've entered the number 18, the quantity of factors is six, and we, we all know, and your students will know by having done the top part of the first page of the worksheet that 18 actually had six factors and then they're going to start doing some experimenting, et cetera. Now, because we're very close to the end of the webinar and I do want to show you a little bit of the second activity, I'm going to stop there, but I highly recommend the, um, uh, this counting factors activity as a really good one. The first good introduction to uh, programming, uh, taking them through what the, what the calculator is actually doing and why it will then take so long if they want to um, get the factors, uh, the number of factors for a huge number like 10,000. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. And in the PowerPoint here, um, uh, the second activity is what is standard deviation. Now, this is uh, um, one of those statistical activities which um, students have to encounter uh, really in year, um, year 12, certainly, in, in further mathematics. But, uh, you know, they're going to be seeing this in other, in other subject areas and certainly in their general maths in year 11. 
uh, and hopefully in, in year 10, um, comparing data sets, which might have the same mean, but quite different spreads. And there's a really nice data set that um, David Tynan, who wrote this particular one, has, has done. I'm just pointing out, this is where you find it. There's the link. Uh, and it is found this time under standard VCE further mathematics. Um, you scroll down again like you did, had to do before. The title is, What is Standard Deviation? And um, David elected not to put the question mark in there, but I have for the, <laughs> for the, for the title of the activity. Um, and uh, once again, uh, being able to scroll, see what's actually involved here, not only do you get the, um, uh, the two uh, worksheets, the student and the teacher, but you also get an Inspire file as well. And the Inspire file can be built up from scratch. In fact, the worksheet describes how to do that. But in case not, um, the Inspire file um, uh, goes, uh, uh, is, is quite complete with the first half of the activity there. And the idea is that you have these, these scores, um, and it's all set up. You don't, you don't really go any further than this particular view of the list and spreadsheet, because the worksheet involves um, two cricketers. And uh, Jamal has these scores of 29, 35, 29, and 27. And there are various um, uh, calculations for how much it deviates from the mean. And then the, later on, the worksheet says, well, suppose instead of we look at Jamal's scores, we look at Rudy's scores, which happen to be seven. And I'm going to change that right now. That's seven. And then the next score is 12. The next score is 18. And you can see right before your eyes that you have um, an updating of all the various um, uh, statistical measures that are being done there, but the important ones are how, how much does the, does the score differ from the mean? What does it mean to have three of these scores below the mean, because the mean is 30, but then this fourth score, 83, is 53 above the mean? And to counteract the negatives, the numbers are squared. Again, very, very well set out on the, on the worksheet. It is now 8 o'clock, uh, as ever, um, we've got probably an hour and a half's worth of material, but uh, this is the bewitching hour. So, Brian, I'm going to hand things over to you and uh, uh, ask you to close off the program now and thank everyone for their attendance. And I'll just uh, note that on the, um, on the uh, uh, PowerPoint that you'll receive, if you want to ask any further questions, there's an email address where you can contact me if you wish. Okay, thanks very much. Terrific. Thanks there, there Roger. Um, and as you were just uh, discussing that one, I just put in the link to, the, uh, to that activity, uh, the direct link, and also to the, um, uh, to, to the earlier ones with the, uh, the mod in there, or the, the counting of factors. So thank you to both our presenters. So we've seen this evening uh, a total of four activities there uh, from, from, uh, from, from the activities exchange that is on the uh, Texas Instruments Australia website. There's a teachers section there where, where you have the activities for students, um, in, including the worksheet and the answers and uh, supporting TNS files. And also, there's a student section in that same on that web page as well. I encourage you to um, uh, direct your students to that as well, because that, that links to some lovely little videos and uh, exam review activities, especially for them. So, thank you, Roger. You're welcome. Thank you, Brian. And thank you also to Craig, who was our Always first presenter this evening. Always a pleasure. Terrific, Craig. And now is your opportunity to type in any last minute questions of both our panelists. And of course, it's also an opportunity for you to express your gratitude because accolades and thanks is always well appreciated as well. <laughs> and you even get a second opportunity for that if you wish, because when, when I close the, the event, you will be taken to a survey page, which we do read and we use that uh, particularly if there's something that you would like for us to present a webinar on, maybe uh, 
uh, for next year's webinar program. Here's your opportunity. Could we please have more of, uh, or could we have a webinar on? Um, there's, there's a chance to type that in, or it could be, hey, would you like to be a webinar presenter? Or just, um, or just share a classroom activity. There's your options. Also, as a follow-up, you will be receiving your uh, attend or a link to your attendee certificate, and also, as was mentioned earlier by the presenters, links through to a recording of this event, and also the support files. Two ways you can do that is through the on-demand section of our website, or uh, I know it's also quite popular is the YouTube site um, where students in particular like to, to take a look at some of the webinars. Quite often the webinars are chopped into shorter sections. Um, for example, tonight's could might be chopped into four sections because we, sure, we saw four activities there. Once again, if you, I dare say you received notice of this webinar by receiving our newsletter, um, if you, if however you you found out about it another way and you're not subscribing to the newsletter, here is the link to do so, and you can also do that from the web page. Just type Texas Instruments Australia into Google and hit enter, and you'll go there. Further to all of that, we have people on telephones who will answer your queries, such as how do I find this on my calculator or um, how do I find more activities? And with all of that, we wish you all well. Good evening to all. Thanks once again to our presenters. Thanks, Brian. And, Thanks, everyone. And all the best for everyone's Bye, end of year. <laughs> Marking exams and writing those reports. And now with some great stepping into 2019 activities. All the best.